What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we'll be taking a peek over here at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market as we start off a new week. As many of you know, as the week came to a close last week after the stock market closed for the week, the price of Bitcoin and crypto fired up after being stuck all week. Now going through the whole weekend, still able to maintain those prices. Kind of a little bit of a bouncy start here on a Monday morning. But in this video, I thought we'd take a look at the bigger picture of Bitcoin and what's happening with the prices in here based on the things we've talked about for the last several months in regards to reversals, liquidations of leverage, and just where we're sitting at right now in regards to how reversals tend to look after we go on and have that final push to get those lows in there before things finally start to reverse their way back up and where we're at right now, if this structure still remains true. And if this were the case, if this were how things were playing out, one would say we have entered into a region in which the pause could come at any moment, really. 2023 has started off with an absolute bang going from 16,600 to now we're even at $23,000 today. So we've watched Bitcoin rise nearly 40% so far this month. Of course, a lot of shock and awe for a lot of people who are looking for $12,000 and then what to do now as they were waiting for price to dip 20% more, but instead is up 47% from the actual literal bottom. And that's where things start to get really challenging as we get right in here, because this is where multiple things can happen. Your most common thing that happens in reversal structures is that somewhere in this giant box, which I'm very well aware here, we have a huge range in here looking at 23,000 all the way, way up in here, maybe even higher before an A, B, C can emerge in here. That is what happened in here. And really, this was a very light ABC. This was super shallow. If you guys remember, we were looking for a 702 retracement to actually emerge in here. And it was so weak, it didn't even get one. And its actual stopping point in here ended up being the 200-day moving average. Well, as we know up here, we're on the upper bound of the 200-day moving average. So that'll be something to keep in mind should we start getting that pullback to actually happen. That in this circumstance, where did it pull back? It pulled back to the 200 day exactly. But this is where it starts to get kind of difficult for those who had sold their bags at the bottom. We're waiting for much lower prices because there becomes a big challenge that happens in here where like you're really dependent on that, that pullback to actually end up happening. Because as we saw in this circumstance, that pullback started from about where we're at right now, where we just kind of start going into real, real, boring stuff like that. But then what happens if the price gets carried further away, then you start becoming more desperate for that to actually show up. And then definitely if we get even further, uh, more desperate for it to actually end up happening and saying, please, dear God, please, dear God, have a big pullback if we start getting to $26,000. Because at that point, Bitcoin will be up nearly 70% at that point. And when we look at retracements of where, how high it could go, there's a lot of different areas of danger that sit way up in here. We're talking, you know, this is a very serious one. It means there's only 40% remaining in that. If you actually go to the real retrace level, 50%, 70% gets you to 618, which is that peak right over in there. And then a 702 is right up there. So half the move will have already been missed by the time we get up here and whether or not you're going to get that pullback or not. I, of course, can't predict the future on what will happen with actual pullbacks i can tell you in most circumstances that's what you get you get a pullback right back down into there and that pullback can happen from anywhere within right in here is totally reasonable for it to happen and i would say it's uncommon for it to happen this low that we would expect to like get up to these heights here to get to about twenty-five thousand. that would be your normal move on what you would do however we saw that's not the case of what happened in here with Bitcoin recently, just within the last year, you could see really where it kind of stalled out before that ABC happened without ever getting all the way back up to that peak. So it's not necessary to, based on how Bitcoin's been behaving just in this last year, that it doesn't have to get all the way up there. But in most circumstances, you do. And like one of them we've looked at a lot has been XRP, right? And so this is kind of how the ending came in in here. Then you imagine Bitcoin for the last two months behaving like this, 
then finally Bitcoin's got this big breakout that we're dealing with right now, right? And so where have we pulled back to? We're pulling back into this area over here. Notice it does not quite get all the way to the peak, but it gets really close. Which you look at Bitcoin right now, how close are we to getting to that moment? We're getting really close to that moment, right? But as you can see, what happens in here is that things can get real sideways for a real long time. So we're kind of at the lowest kind of area right now of where that could start happening at. But you could see we've now kind of broken through these levels right in here. And the question is, are we already at that phase where that's going to begin? Maybe there's just like one more wick that's got to come up in here and then boom, we end up starting it out. And I know this can sound nuanced and annoying to hear that and be like, oh, you don't really have a real clear opinion on which one it's going to do. And that's because we're just picking what ranging behavior is going to be like in the actual trend. But if you were to look at other indicators and say, well, where's like a likely place that this could actually stop out at, right? Like, why don't we switch over to the weekly time frame and look at like moving averages and stuff, right? Well, you could see we're about to have like this moving average intersection here happen with the 50 week and the 200 week, right? That's set to actually happen right there at about 24,800. Could we come up here, do a little wick through this area and then find rejection at these moving averages? It's possible. One thing I also know that like if we go back and look through Bitcoin's price history, one, we know we've never been on the south side of the 200 week moving average. So this is going to be the first time where we've broken through it, closed many months below or many, we can say months too, but weeks below it. And then now first attempt to go back and really hit it after a long period, right? We touched it back here, but really going back to attempt to hit it back in here. We haven't had that happen in the past at all. Another thing we haven't had happen in the past, there's never been a circumstance where the 50 week has crossed the 100 week without a clear breakout coming here, right? Like if Bitcoin doesn't just fire through this thing right now, we're going to see that show up in two weeks. We're going to see that cross actually happen. Something that's never happened before. Bitcoin's price has always kind of come in to save the day before that could actually end up occurring. So we'll see. But here we go. This is kind of an area of interest. Another one kind of pointing to, hey, there are resistance levels that are happening right up in here at these upper bound of these range levels right in here. And for people who are attempting to day trade that or who have completely missed the boat, Looking for 12K down in here, I cannot tell you what to do in this circumstance. The only thing I can tell you is like, there's a lot of resistance right there. It's super common for resistance to emerge right in there. But at the same time, I've talked about what I've thought has been going on with Bitcoin this entire time. And it's that I don't think Bitcoin's setting a new all time high, unless if the stock market goes and sets a new all time high. The thing I'm very wary of is what's actually happening with Ethereum, or at least what did happen with Ethereum back in 2018 is that, and I talked about this in a live stream this morning, um, and it's something I've brought up on this channel a couple of dozen times, uh, is being wary of that this is actually the thing that's going on in here for Bitcoin. That puts you at about $40,000, and you can see in here, there were really no pullbacks that actually ended up happening in here for re-entries to happen in here, which would just be a straight line up, and then absolute goblin wreck town for Bitcoin afterwards. And that's still in the cards. And should we get a monster bounce that really is coming out of here just like that? It's going to be my thoughts. It's going to be disagreed with entirely. I'm not here to, you know, care if people disagree with me or not. I was disagreed with here, 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 and here. I've spent seven months having S talk to me about this being Wyckoff accumulation and being the bottom for the altcoin market. Whereas most major altcoins bottomed in June of last year, whether it's XRP, Ethereum, Binance, Doge, Ethereum Classic, Chainlink, Litecoin, Matic, QNT, SHIB, Uniswap, or Monero, it's a constant battle against the masses. The bottom has been in for eight months. But the point I'm trying to make here is that we've talked about this for a long time. And if Bitcoin does just keep going on a rampage up in here at the velocity that it's been going at currently, undoubtedly, that'll be my thoughts of what's actually happening with Bitcoin. The problem is what will be the emotional phases of the market should we actually end up having that. Right now, we're just kind of in disbelief. Right now, we're kind of in this phase where don't trust the rally. It's a disbelief. It's a bull trap. 
But if it keeps going up a little bit higher, then people are going to be like, no, wait, no, still bear. And it becomes a, it becomes less about disbelief in the rally. The rally has obviously happened. It becomes anger at the rally. It becomes, I'm going to short this thing. And we're going to start seeing a ton of people shorting this thing. We're talking about all the people who are bearish on, on Twitter, who are calling for 12K. Now the price is suddenly 30K. And they say, yeah, you know what? It's true. It missed it. it. I didn't see that coming, but there's no question this thing's turning over. I'm going to be shorting the heck out of this. And you have a bunch of people shorting, shorting, shorting because 12K still hasn't happened. And now it's anger. And we, we don't think about that with investors of anger, of more of like a revenge trade, that the trade went against them so badly that they're going to they're going to try to have revenge on the market. And that's frustration and anger that the prices went up without them. So what do you do when you're frustrated and angry? Burn it all down, short it to the ground, right? Then after that, you blow through all of those shorts and you completely destroy them. Then there's no money left for people to be shorting. The shorters were obviously wrong. The people who were in disbelief were obviously wrong. The prices are up. We should have all known that they were going up. It's super obvious at this point. We should all just buy the market, right? And at that point, that's where that's the end of the move, where it's euphoric, shorts have been destroyed, disbelievers have been destroyed, everybody is a believer again, everybody's excited. And uh, if you weren't here during this moment of the market, right in here, I was. And for people who were here during that moment, this is the time of where you had like bearable guy one, two, three with the queen song, don't stop me now. That's the exact moment where that was happening. Everybody was feeling good, don't stop me now. I'm like a rocket ship on my way to Mars. Remember that, guys? That's what it's like when the top comes in. Twitter spaces, people fist bumping, pumping their hands, having a good time. That's what it's like when the peak actually ends up coming in. Our current phase right now is disbelief and a lot of people who got left behind. Then comes anger. Then comes capitulation to the bull side. Everybody's bullish and everybody's euphoric. Once we get to the everybody's euphoric phase, that's the end of the move. But Point is, right, we're talking about what's happening right in here. And the only thing we can do is say, what have we been looking at for the last several months? We've been looking at this structure and we've been looking at this from a reversal aspect. And in reversals, the thing that is due up next for these structures is an ABC. They can be silly long, silly long. Bitcoin's right here. This was only four months only. But at the same time, there's that real serious situation there of that it's going to just do what Ethereum did and this thing is going to go very quickly. Um, and one of the reasons why it kind of has a feeling of that potential is because of what I was just talking about with disbelief, anger, and euphoria. I don't see a ton of angry shorting happening out there. I don't see euphoria happening out there. Um, and you know, a lot of people will say, I see lots of people posting exciting stuff. I'm like, man, dude, I've been through so many euphoria phases. What we're experiencing right now is not a euphoria phase. There are not Twitter spaces being held with people playing loud music, screaming, we're going to the moon. That's euphoria. There's not a bunch of infighting on Twitter during euphoria. There's tons of infighting going on. So this is kind of where my mind's at right now on where we are with Bitcoin. We've broken out. We've gotten it, guys. It's been exciting. We know this about markets, though, that the upward phases are usually much faster than the consolidation phases. Like even for those who are just like technical, I want to say bull flags, right? So like even if you do bull flags and you work your way up, right, would that physically look reasonable to you? Sure, it would. But like even this right here, that's just a flag like that takes you into March. So it's just kind of having, like for me right now, I say, man, we waited two whole months to finally get that break. I do recognize where we are. This was the area of these reversals. This is the area right here where these things typically stall out at. There's always the chance for a little more juice to come out of this thing. But if this thing clearly breaks out and we get way beyond that 25,000, we're no longer going to be talking about this anymore. And it's going to be all about watch out, watch out, watch out, excitement, 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 excitement. But then all of these areas right in here, there's just danger sprinkled <laughs> everywhere in here. Um, and it'll be about watching that, like I'm talking about uh, sentiment, right? Right now, disbelief, then comes angry anger that they got left behind so they're shorting then comes the blowout of the shorts again then becomes everybody capitulating back to bull and then when the capitulation back to bull happens uh, that's it 
rocket ship on the way to Mars. Uh, it's time to say, no, 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 I'll just hop off at the moon. Thank you. Uh, you can go ahead and try to take this to, to Mars, but most likely it's coming back down to Earth. Now, one of the things that has been interesting, they've been asked a lot about in the live streams is the Bitcoin dominance, which is at 42.2%, depending on where you look at, right? If you look at coin market cap, which is the one we look at over here on Coin Trader Pro, or if you look at the calculation that's made by TradingView, in which they have their own calculations that they do. Both of these sit pretty much right in the middle of the range that we've been at. So just at about 50% of the entire nearly two year long range happening here for the Bitcoin dominance. Now, I would have expected this thing to actually break down right now. So it is getting interesting as back in the middle of the range. Question is to talk about it and say, well, what does it really mean, right? So we have reference points to talk of where Bitcoin dominance was like when the bottom came in in 2018 and 2019, right? So we were right here when the Bitcoin dominance fired up after the Bitcoin price chart hit its bottom. So we had already spent the entire year with the Bitcoin dominance moving its way up during the whole fall of the bear market in 2018. Bitcoin dominance went up, 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 up and up during this entire time period, right? We look at Bitcoin's peak. Bitcoin's peak was right back in here in November, right in this spot right here. And we look over here, there's been no rise, right? Even when the bottom of Bitcoin came in right in here, or really this whole area right in here, Bitcoin dominance went down. So you have a completely different structure and behavior of the Bitcoin dominance here in 2022 versus 2018. By the time the bottom of the bear market came in for Bitcoin, it had just gone all the way up, swallowing the whole market. It didn't swallow the market at all this time. And what's been interesting is that we're seeing this Bitcoin dominance rise. And if we go back and look at how Bitcoin's price has behaved here in 2023, for example, we'll just start here on January 1st of 2023, pretty decent rise here for Bitcoin. It's up 38% in 2023. Kind of go down the list here. In 2023, Cardano is up 54%. Algo is up 46%. Atom is up 39%. AVAX is up 64%. Bitcoin Cash is up 38%. Binance Coin is up 23%. Crow is up 41%. Dash is up 27%. Doge is up 27%. Dot is up 53%. EOS is up 27%. Ethereum Classic is up 44%. Ethereum is up 35%. Now I could keep going down this list and I've already gone through quite a few of them, but I haven't been skipping any, right? We've been going through all of them to see like when Bitcoin dominance is rising, the scariest thing uh, for me being in this market, going through multiple cycles of Bitcoin dominance rising and Bitcoin dominance falling, the scariest part is when the Bitcoin dominance is rising and the altcoin market isn't rising at all. And all the money is flowing into Bitcoin. And OGs know this. People who have been around for a long time. The most terrifying thing is when it's Bitcoin ripping all by itself. And that's when you usually are seeing those Bitcoin dominance rises happening. But, you know, it's not really the case. Like, move over to the next one, right? Filecoin, 86%. HBAR, 91%. IOTA, 34%. We're looking at Bitcoin at 38%. So what is the mathematics that are happening here to where the Bitcoin dominance is rising? The scariest thing in a Bitcoin dominance rise is when Bitcoin, especially when the prices of the market are falling and Bitcoin's not falling as fast as the rest of the market, or when Bitcoin's rising independently and nothing else is rising with it. But we can see mathematically the percentage rises that are happening throughout the market are mostly in line with Bitcoin, with many of them massively exceeding Bitcoin, which we all know since January 1st, Solana is up 148%. Near is up 105%. So there's definitely a rise in the Bitcoin dominance. No breakouts by any means. And we're not seeing the behavior that is scary in the market where the Bitcoin dominance is rising and nothing else is beating it. Is Bitcoin the best performer in the market? No, not even by, not even by a long shot. Most of the coins we just showed are, are beating out Bitcoin. The worst performer on the list is 27% up in 2023 versus Bitcoin's 38. The worst performer is at 27% with most of them beating Bitcoin. So it seems like every live stream I do, I get asked about the Bitcoin dominance in this range and where it is, as if there's some ultimate fear in here. 
I see Bitcoin Maxi's touting celebration on Twitter <laughs> as if some big victory has happened here because this metric says 42% or 43%. Not too worried about this thing yet. The, the time that this thing becomes concerning from my experiences of being in this market now for six years almost is when Bitcoin starts to go up where Bitcoin's sitting at the top of the best performers for the day. Many times it's green and everything else is red. That is where it is scary, but that's just not the case. Yesterday, it was at the bottom of the list. Today, it's mid-pack. The altcoin market is running, many of them performing better than Bitcoin. So all is okay, but definitely something we'll keep our eyes on to see if this thing gets carried away. But otherwise, whether you use CoinTrader Pro or whether you use Coin Market Caps calculation, we sit right there at about the middle of this range that we've been in for two years. If we do start to see breaking out happen in here and the altcoin market isn't following along with it, may have to start questioning what's really happening with the dynamics of the actual market. But as of right now, the whole market is moving up like this. And until there's some serious dynamic change where it's Bitcoin moving and the altcoin market not moving, not really worried about it. I'm not really finding much significance to the actual data at this point. Should it start getting a bigger break? Should we start seeing Bitcoin at the top of the list performing green while the rest of the market is red? Or should Bitcoin go red, but the whole rest of the market goes super red? Yeah, then, then, then we got something to talk about. But right now, just going through these individually, we see most of them are beating out Bitcoin. And the absolute worst performer is up 27% versus Bitcoin's 38. So we'll keep an eye on it for sure. But as of right now, it just sits right there in the middle of the range that it's been in for two years. So we'll keep an eye on it and see if things start to get carried away over there. As for the altcoin market cap, still looking just fine, looking like Wyckoff accumulation that has still held in here, getting through the 200-day moving average, which was a rejection with the FTX and CZ Binance stuff. And then, of course, it appears as if we're working on our sign of strength phase in here. And after a sign of strength, you typically see a pretty aggressive move. So still waiting to see follow through happen over there on that. And then we'll assess it from there. Otherwise, looking at the right side of the screen, no indications happening in here as if Bitcoin is some big monster happening in here when the rest of the market is still doing just fine. But worth paying attention to and we'll keep our eyes on it. Otherwise, that's it for today. Taking a while for me to record this. I had to take a break and run to the gym real quick. It's kind of like this rule. If I reach this certain time period and I'm not done, it doesn't matter. I have to go to the gym. I got that done. I'm back finishing the video. Otherwise, green day out there in the market. Stock market, very green as well. NASDAQ up over 2%. S&P up over 1%. Dow Jones up 313 points. So good start to the week. But all eyes on the range that we're at for Bitcoin to see if this is kind of a stopping point. This is really what we've been talking about for months. This whole structure to get this big old breakout. We've gotten it. Now it's all about well, what happens right here. Because in the structure we followed for the longest time, this is typically the, the stopping point. We're getting really close to it. So we'll watch it throughout the week. Otherwise, enjoy the green days. We got them. I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.